Greetings! The computer mouse. You use it to control your cursor on the screen, to click here and click there to play the very important computer games. This makes the mouse a very important peripheral. Your hand will be on the mouse for a few hours every day. So a good mouse needs to be comfortable enough, reliable enough, and precise enough. And needs to have the buttons and the features that you want so that you can select exactly what you want to select on the screen. Despite the importance of having a good mouse, many PC users settle for whatever mouse they found on sale or the cheapest option available without taking into consideration the variety of choices available. So what should you know before buying a mouse? And how do you know when you found the right mouse for you? Here in the office, we have a selection of mice that we currently recommend in our mice guide. The most important criteria that we're going to discuss are comfort, precision, the number of buttons, and the extra features. Let us start with comfort. When shopping for a mouse, the most important factor is that the mouse feels good to you. As long as you are happy with your experience and your hand is comfortable using the mouse for extended periods of time, then it is a good mouse for you. First, mice need to be comfortable in the user's hand. That means that the mouse needs to have a texture, a shape, a grip style, and a weight that feels good to the user. Now, obviously, comfort is very subjective. It is impossible to quantify or even describe accurately, but it is still the most important factor when considering a mouse. Whenever possible, we recommend testing the mouse in person before making a purchase to ensure that it feels good to your hand and grip style. If it's not possible to test the mouse in person, it's good to at least understand your grip style and try to find reviews from people who share your preferences. Let's talk about surface texture. Mice can have a hard plastic finish, rough plastic, soft plastic, a glossy plastic finish, rubberized uh, surfaces or rubberized sides, and some mice even have metallic parts. Surface finish is important because of two aspects. Firstly, it determines how grippy your mouse is. Do you want a mouse that you can easily slide or glide your hand over? Do you want a mouse that sticks a bit more to your fingers so that you never drop it if you need to lift it and move it? Secondly, people's hands are different in how they react to different surfaces. Some people complain that their hands feel sweaty when they're using glossy mice. Some people complain about using hard mice. So go to the store, pick the mouse up, feel the mouse, touch the mouse, caress the mouse, keep your mind out of the gutter and pick a mouse with a surface finish that feels good to you. A grip style is how you prefer to hold the mouse in your hand. Without doing anything, pause and take a look at how you are holding your mouse right now. You will most likely be using one of three common grip styles. The palm grip, the claw grip, or the fingertip grip. With the palm grip, the user's hand rests completely on the mouse, with full contact between the palm and the mouse. This is the most common type of grip and the most comfortable for most people. But you sacrifice a bit of accuracy since it's not easy to click the mouse buttons when you compare it to the other styles. Claw grip involves shaping your hand more like a claw so that your fingertips and the back of your palm are in contact with the mouse, but nothing else. This grip is less comfortable than palm grip, but it allows for greater control and faster clicking, making it more preferable with some gamers. Fingertip grip involves only touching the mouse with your fingertips, with the rest of your palm resting on the mouse pad, or in this case, the table. The shape of the hand is more natural than the claw, 
and the fingertips give more control. But this is the most tiring grip since you move the whole mouse with your fingertips alone. Orientation refers to the shape of the mouse for the hand. All mice will have one of two orientations, right-handed or ambidextrous. Right-handed mice, such as these examples, are designed specifically for the right hand. Ambidextrous mice, such as these examples, are typically symmetrical, allowing them to be used by either hand. Unfortunately for left-handed people, left-handed options are very few, so you may want to look for ambidextrous mice instead. The physical size of the mouse is also an important factor to consider, and your preference will mainly be determined by the size of your hand. Generally speaking, bigger mice feel better to people with bigger hands, and smaller mice feel better to those with smaller hands. You may also want a wider mouse to rest your thumb or pinky finger. This Mionix mouse is a good example. The height and length of the mouse can also play a factor, depending on your grip style. A mouse that is too tall may feel uncomfortable for palm grip. A mouse that is too long won't work well with claw grip. The weight of the mouse also plays into your level of comfort. Some people prefer a light mouse that won't feel cumbersome for several hours of use, while others might prefer the solid feel of a heavy mouse. Today, some mice allow you to add or remove small weights until you find the perfect feel for you. It is also important to consider the precision of the mouse. The purpose of a mouse is to track your hand movements and translate them into cursor movements on the screen. If the mouse cannot track your movements as accurately as you want, then it has failed its purpose and it should feel ashamed of itself. Your mouse's sensor plays a big role in its precision. Modern mice use either an optical LED sensor or a laser sensor to track movements. Generally speaking, optical sensors have superior precision, but they don't work on shiny surfaces or glass. Laser mice, by comparison, will work on just about any surface, but you may sacrifice some precision. Another specification that you may notice is DPI or CPI which stands for dots per inch or counts per inch. DPI or CPI measure sensitivity and not precision, so don't be fooled into buying a high DPI mouse thinking that's more precise. The general consensus is that anything in the 1000 to 2000 DPI range is perfectly fine. Gamers who play fast-paced competitive games may want a mouse with a DPI in the 2000 to 3000 range, if you go significantly above 3000 dpi, the sensitivity may become more of a hindrance than a benefit, as it won't allow for precise tracking. That's why having a precise, accurate mouse is so important, since you need the cursor on the screen to go to the exact point that you want it to go. Some forms of imprecision, such as acceleration, can be acceptable to some users. On the other hand, jitter, where your cursor randomly moves around a few pixels in random directions, jitter is universally unacceptable. Other than the sensor, precision is also affected by lag, which is usually an issue with wireless mice. Wired mice have very little lag and thus are usually the best option for gamers. Some wireless mice have good enough lag, but some are downright horrible. We've had experience with some wireless mice that are so laggy and imprecise that they're pretty much unusable for gaming. Button layout plays another big role in the mouse that you choose. Some people just want two buttons in a scroll wheel. Others might be dissatisfied with anything less than seven or eight buttons on their mouse. Typically, gamers may prefer to have more buttons to serve specific purposes while gaming. However, plenty of gamers even competitive gamers who win major tournaments, they use mice with just three or four buttons. If you know that you will need the extra buttons on your mouse for a specific reason, 
then please make sure to get a mouse with the necessary number of buttons. Otherwise, you might be paying for the extra buttons that you won't ever use. There are many other features in mice that may or may not play a role when you choose your mouse. For example, lift-off distance refers to how high the mouse must be lifted before it stops tracking. A low lift-off distance is always preferable, as long as you have a decent mouse pad. A mouse with a high lift-off distance may continue to track even after you've picked it up, and that can be annoying. Having a dual-mode scroll can be a deal-breaker for some people. I personally find myself very attracted to the G502, since I'm very used to having the dual-mode scroll. Another feature that some people desire in their mouse is having custom colors, while others believe that this is a trivial thing. Make sure that you know what you want from a mouse before you make a purchase. Finally, let's talk about mouse pads. We are sometimes asked, do we need a mouse pad? You do not absolutely need a mouse pad, but we highly recommend that you use one. A good mouse pad reduces friction providing a smoother glide and improved precision. Mouse pads also reduce wear and tear, both on your mouse and on your table. Hopefully, you now know a little bit more about mice. There is no mouse that is perfect for everyone. Our advice is to test the mouse in person to determine whether the mouse feels good to you. If that's not an option, then read some trustworthy reviews and recommendations and carefully consider the factors that affect a mouse's performance and feel. If you want to learn even more about mice, then we've provided some helpful links in the video description below. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. If you want to learn more about PC hardware, subscribe to our channel. Or don't, it's entirely up to you. Thank you for watching.